Alright, so there's a lot of uh, different factors that you have to really pay attention to uh, when you're doing this. Because all of the outputs from the RC, from the gyro, and all of the uh, centering points and everything, they have to be on the same scale. Now, I have rewritten the PID library in this model to a negative 1 to 1 rate instead of the stock 0 to 1 rate um, because it's, it's just easier to use the 0 as a base and number 2 there's a, there's some kind of anomaly with the PID function uh, when you're just tuning the, the proportional there's a uh, there's something funny with it but a couple things I really want to go over so that you understand kind of what's going on here uh, now the input to the steering module uh, from your one RC controller for your steering left right that one's gonna feed right into a common filter number one uh, and it gets remapped to a 0 to 1 for the 0.5 and that one feeds directly into the steering module uh, now let me look here final output okay now uh, the RC control channel 2 is for speed front forward backwards now that one is first mapped to a negative 1 to 1 rate uh, so it can feed into the PID module on the manual control portion of it um, and then also the accelerometer data for your angle is also being mapped in a negative 1 to 1 uh, scale not zero to one so all of those factors are uh, scaled from the negative one to one uh, and now the pulse generator when you activate the manual control which is actually disabling the PID controller that enables manual control uh, I have it set to a 120 pulses per second so basically 60 or there's, so there's 240 different states there uh, one of the states being taking input from the gyro to remain upright in the second state is taking the input from the RC channel uh, to go the direction you want so it's split in the time so basically you can go forward with the uh, speed controller on the RC and it'll try and do what you want to do, but it'll also revert back and check itself and make sure it's standing upright. That's the whole theory behind enabling and disabling the PID. Uh, and then once these are fed out of the PID controller, they are remapped again, going right into the steering module from a negative 1 to 1 rate to a 0 to 1 rate, so you can maintain that 0.50 on your speed so you know it's a lot of remapping but you kind of have to look at what you want to do overall if more of the uh, good reactions are coming from changing everything to the one that mapping value of a 0 to 1 for a 0.5 center for you then use it but I'm just telling you what's easier for cutesy over there um, but I'm going to show you a couple more things here with Visuvan, I'll so show you some of the output uh, and the reason behind the remapping of everything so you can actually see a picture of it and how it actually works and why uh, why I'm actually remapping everything to that negative one to one instead of staying with the zero to one. Alright. Alright, so to get Visuino set up, you are going to want to add your steering and your H bridge module number one uh, you're gonna want to add your column filters uh, for both sides the steering and the speed side so no matter what your input is you get a nice clean wave going out uh, and then you need to add your two channels for your RC remote control now one of them for the steering is mapped on a zero to one and then the one for the speed is mapped to a negative one to one uh, you need to add your PID controller 
uh, with zeros as your center. Uh, start with your proportional at a one, integral and derivative at zeros to start to balance it. Um, and now all the inputs to the PID have to be mapped on a negative one to one ratio. Uh, your x axis center uh, bringing it to a zero and that is also negative 0.1 to a positive 0.1 uh, and then that is also remapped into a full scale negative 1 to 1. All right, so your pulse indicate your pulse generator there is set at 120, and the output is going into the PID enable pin for the input there. All right, so your remote control and your gyros uh, outputs are combined inside of the PID component. Uh, now you have to also remember to remap all of your outputs from your RC and your PID component back into a 0 to 1 uh, ratio and not the negative 1 to 1 ratio because your steering module will not work correctly. In 60 times a second the PID is under control and then 60 times a second the manual control from the RC is in effect. All right, so I hope that helps uh, clear the subject of how do I manually control a, uh, a PID that is under automatic control by a gyroscope. Um, you know, it's really, really, really important to get them all on the same page, so to say, with the mappings. And that is the most important factor so that they're all working on the same scale. Uh, the robot will be nearly impossible to number one tune and number two control if you don't have the same scale. If you're not if like if you're using the point one to a negative point one, you know it doesn't really make sense that it's going to use that. So you have to get it to the same scale, like uh, or it's not going to know what it's going to do and it's going to just stand there and fall over and maybe break. So I hope this one, this one helped you out with your manual pitch control in Visuino. Um, you know, it's really, really, really easy to uh, make these kind of changes, but you have to know where to start, and you know, have to know what uh, sync pins to enable. You know, some of you probably didn't even know that you could do that. You know, create a another sync uh, sync pin or multi sync pin so you can input values right into it. Instead of having to go into the PID, you can save them in the memory and let them read that memory slot. And that's the next step uh, for us, actually, is to get our values into the EEPROM. So that the EEPROM will just read it for our center points, our remaps. Uh, there's, there's very near to 100 different values that we're going to be putting into the memory uh, that, go, that have directly to do with just number one remapping it, number two your center points because each each channel for your remote control and say takes two to two for the mapping and then it takes two for your zero it takes another one for your dead zone zero uh, so there's four right there on one and you know so four to eight they're gonna be damn near 100 of them you know just for a balancing robot and these values are pretty much the most important uh, part of it because this is what tells the robots what its default settings are and that's another part altogether so I hope you learned something and I hope it helped